So uh, I think question 12 is simple enough that I can uh, do this using the Zoom annotations tool on the screen uh, without needing to scroll anywhere. So let me do it that way. So it's describing two identical particles of some mass approaching each other at equal speed, which is nice. So I have a particle of mass M moving at speed beta C and another particle, the same mass coming in head on. And it says colliding inelastically and combining into a single particle of big mass M and it would have to be at rest in order to conserve total momentum. And it's asking what is the mass M of the new particle in terms of M and beta. I want to um, do something a little bit unusual, which is uh, use moment, uh, momentum for vector uh, to describe this interaction. So I can describe the, the four momentum of this particle. So um, as a reminder of your tutorial from earlier question, the momentum for vector is built this way. It's a built as a, this is squiggly on underline is by the way, what I used to indicate that this is a four vector. It's analogous to, you know, this arrow thing that we use for three vector. So the momentum for vector, it's a built out of the relativistic energy and uh, the three momentum. So it, the one of the components is the relativistic energy. And if I'm avoiding using C equals one unit, then it should be energy divided by C. And then the rest of the components, three components is the, what you remember as the, the momentum. Uh, I have to remember to use correct formulas as I'm building this together. The relativistic energy is given by gamma mc squared and the relativistic momentum is given by gamma mv and where needed we will use the you know these expressions the common uh, common symbols that we define beta is uh, one uh, beta is uh, v over c, speed in units of c, and in terms of beta, gamma is equal to one over square root of one minus beta squared. And because it's uh, sometimes convenient, uh, beta can be expressed in terms of gamma by inverting this relationship, square root of one minus one over gamma squared. So, um, so with that in mind, I can describe the momentum of uh, rightward moving particle, P1, and momentum of the leftward moving particle P2. And when I talk about the four momentum, I am really talking about energy and momentum. And the P3 would be the four momentum of this combined particle. So in this four vector notation, I can state the idea of conservation of energy and momentum in this rather simple way. P1 plus P2, which is the total four momentum before collision, is equal to P3, which is the four momentum after the collision. So P1 <laughs> is equal to, uh, let me write this as a, a column vector uh, with the first component being my, uh, the, my, um, my, the time component or the energy component. And let me say, this is my uh, X direction. And I'm just gonna write the, the X component of momentum. The, the Y and Z components of momentum are zero, not interesting. So I will uh, express these vectors this way. So for P1, it's gonna be uh, gamma MC squared uh, divided by C. So, uh, so I guess it's just the gamma MC. And the uh, X component of momentum, it's moving in the plus X direction. So it'll be um, plus gamma MB plus P2. It's gonna be, the, it has the same amount of energy as, uh, or you know, gamma MC and the gamma is the same. That doesn't depend on the sign, gamma MC. And then for momentum part, it's moving leftward. So it should be minus gamma MB. And you can see that when I add these two as vectors, the, the momentum component, they will cancel out and I get zero for that component as a, I would expect. And for the energy or the time component, it will be two gamma, oh, I have to be careful here. Let me say gamma prime MC. 
The thing to be careful here is that this gamma is always associated with the speed of the particle that's moving and uh, the how fast these particles are moving and how fast this particle is moving are different. So I want to make sure that I use different symbol here so that I don't confuse myself. And in fact, oh, uh, big M is not moving, it's moving at zero. So I guess I already know what this gamma prime is that's equal to one <laughs> for a particle at rest. So, so this is gonna be a two MC over, uh, not over, two MC as the energy component and zero as the momentum component. Oh, so I, I think I have my answer. So I have two MC is equal to uh, gamma, I, I skipped a step, which could be confusing. So the left hand side, to minimize the confusion, let me do it this way. The, no, let me just backtrack. Oh, okay, so, sorry. <laughs> so I was doing this addition of these two components. So let me just finish doing that. Adding these two components is uh, two gamma. And I think what confused me was for whatever reason I was writing capital M. Okay, so gamma MC plus gamma MC, that's a two gamma, and it is saying gamma, I'm just doing algebra. Two gamma, small MC, I'm still describing what's going on on the left-hand side. Now, for the right-hand side, uh, let me color code it so that I don't confuse myself here. For the right-hand side, it's gonna be the expression again, the energy, um, in the first uh, um, element of this uh, column vector and the momentum in the second element of the column vector. So for the energy of this particle at rest, it's just gonna be its rest energy. So MC squared, capital MC squared. And the, its momentum is zero, it's at rest. So, um, so with that, uh, looking at this, we see, oh yeah, so this is the equality that I have that two gamma small mc, um, forgot to divide it by c. I think I warned you that you will see me make this error from time to time, which is coming from my habit of setting c equals one. Uh, I will try to avoid that. So, um, so you know, whenever I see the mistake, I will fix it, <laughs> but don't be too surprised to see, keep seeing that c equals one mistake. Um, yeah, so, so this is the equality we have. So all I need to do is just solve for M. Uh, so solving for M, I get M is equal to, you know, CS cancel out, it should be two gamma M. So really all I need to do is write out what gamma is in terms of beta. So this is gonna be two small M divided by square root of uh, one minus beta squared. So, um, oh, I, I guess I can actually, it's uh, looking for a symbolic answer so I can just, plug that in, uh, 2m, 2m divided by uh, square root of one minus beta squared. And I'm just typing these uh, symbols. You can also use the entry tool here. Okay, that's uh, the mass of the new particle. And it asks uh, how much kinetic energy was transformed into other forms of energy, uh, other mainly meaning the mainly meaning the um, the rest energy. Uh, give your answer in terms of M, beta, and C. So, um, so what it's asking for in a kind of roundabout way is, what is the difference between the rest energy here and the rest energy here? So it'll be this quantity um, times C squared minus MC squared. So, um, oh, so I guess I can factor out MC squared. So MC squared times uh, this quantity here, uh, one over uh, square root of one minus beta squared minus the, there's two here, minus two, because there were two particles before. And the, to the question, was any energy lost? No. In fact, in special, so this is a change coming from non-relativistic mechanics to special relativity. So in the non-relativistic mechanics, we would often say, oh, mechanical energy is not always conserved. And in special relativity, that changes. In all types of collisions, even in an inelastic collision, total energy is not conserved. 
in non-relativistic mechanics, uh, because when we said the total mechanical energy, it only included the kinetic and potential energy. It meant um, you could have energy being transformed into other stuff. Now, in special relativity, rest energy includes everything. It's like a net energy of everything. So, so in special relativity, um, energy is always conserved. <laughs> That's what we've always said. <laughs> it's just that in physics 4A, we weren't always accounting for all forms of energy. In special, rel in special relativity, we do. So energy is never lost in any collision. Any kind of transformation of energy will get reflected in the change in the rest energy. So with that, let me submit and that's all the answers. Um,